Okay, we're back in Matrix uh, Gold, and uh, I'm going to just kind of talk a little bit about the texturing tool and different kinds of surfaces and, and what they mean. Uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with NURB surface and uh, poly surface and uh, closed surface and open surface and all that. Uh, but I'm going to explain a little bit maybe what that means, and then I'm also going to go over a little bit of the texturing tool. Uh, so uh, first, let's Let's uh, start with the texturing tool. I went ahead and uh, just real quick uh, made this simple uh, band here. And if I click on it, uh, it's all uh, a closed surface. Uh, so it means it's watertight. It's, it's, I could put a sprue on it and send it off for uh, printing uh, right now uh, for the most part. Uh, but there's one thing I want, how, how I can tell what kind of surface it is, is if I click on it, and I come over here to explode, and I try to explode the ring, right? But I can't, okay? Uh, I can't explode it because it's a NURB surface. It's all one surface, okay? Uh, but if I was to take the, a box, and we'll put a box out here, Okay, so here's a box, and uh, I click on it, uh, and we have a closed surface. It's watertight. If you wanted to print that, you could, uh, and it would come out fine. Uh, but if I take it and I go over to explode it, uh, I can click on each individual surface. So this really, when it's joined together, is a poly surface. Uh, it's something that is done with multiple uh, layers uh, connected together to make a closed or watertight surface. So this is a poly surface. This is a uh, NURB surface. Okay, so uh, this, okay, there's some things you can do with uh, um, NURB surfaces that you cannot do with poly surface. So when you're designing, I think I showed a flower uh, several videos back we did that with a, uh, a NURB surface so, <clears throat> so that we were able to do a little extra um, manipulating on it where you couldn't do it in the um, poly surface thing and the command one of the commands is is if I go down here to my command line and I type in points on okay uh, and I hit enter and I try to pick my poly surface here and hit enter I can't get any points on because it's a poly surface. It only does it to a uh, NURB surface. But if I was to explode it and pick one side and type in points on uh, and hit enter, and that side there, uh, there's my uh, uh, points. I can turn them on, okay? All right, but at, when it's joined together, you have to type in points off to uh, get rid of it. Hold on a second, let me get rid of this thing here. Uh, so points off, and there you go. Okay, so the points go off. Now, uh, cannot, of course, do it when it's all joined together. Now this ring, on the other hand, okay, uh, is a, a NURB surface. It's all one surface. So if I type in points on, I am actually able to uh, add the points, okay? So now I can take all these points and, you know, you can manipulate them if you wanted to. Uh, there's all kind of things that you could be able to do it uh, with this type of surface. Uh, so making a, a, you know, this is kind of a more advanced way of actually uh, designing something into a, a NURB surface versus a poly surface. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you get the design that you're looking for, uh, that's, that's really all that matters. Uh, points off. Surface, okay. Points. P O I N T S O F F. Points off. All right. Uh, so that's the difference between a NURB surface and a poly surface, okay? So I, I just wanted to touch base with that because later there's some tools that you can uh, do. Uh, with uh, NURB surfaces that you cannot do with poly surfaces. And we'll talk about those later, so I'm just giving you a heads up on that, the difference between the two surfaces. 
Uh, all right, and now let's talk about the texturing tool real quick. Uh, so uh, texturing tools, I believe in our tools menu, and it's right here, uh, texture 3D. Uh, so uh, you click on it and it tells you to pick your object, pick my object, and then you go to your uh, texturing uh, materials. Now, um, you notice they're all black and white, so uh, th that's later on we'll talk about that. So let's just pick a material. Let's just do something, something like this here, okay? So I'll ex ex select that and turn this off. Okay, so it applied my material. Let's turn it to a uh, plastic so we can kind of see what's going on with it. So as you can tell, it applies to the entire ring, right? So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but over here, you can change the U direction uh, intensity uh, so you can get a little bit higher or lower texture uh, rate in the U or in the V. Uh, you can rotate the texture to give it a little bit uh, different look. Uh, so there's some... Uh, things you can do here to manipulate uh, the look. You can go to your advance. Now uh, if you notice the pictures were all black and white so if you want to highlight more of the black which you know depending on the item uh, it'll takes take away or add to according to whatever that picture was. So it's it's basically taking the black and kind of highlighting it a little bit uh, more. All right. And the same thing with the whites. You can do the the whites too. It'll it'll change the intensity uh, of what it's picking up on. Uh, you can reverse the colors, which will change it. A mess resolution. You can make it a higher mess resolution or a lower mess resolution. It'll just take a little longer for it to uh, flow up there for you. Uh, the resolution on high, low. Uh, if you want real quick speed, you can you can kind of really get it a little bit quicker. Well, that's mess resolution. Uh, so, depending on your computer's capacity, I guess high, medium, very high, you can change that around. Uh, you can check uh, change the the mapping channel or the projection mode. What it kind of look and that that'll change the look of the item as well. Excuse me, uh, and. Uh, so there's some other materials, uh, ways to be able to manipulate the design so you can kind of play around with those and get the best design y you're looking for. Uh, but right now you can see it's going around my entire ring. It's a nerve service, right? There's no set way, so I can't uh, take away anything, right? So that I can make this uh, a smooth service. So we're just going to back out of that for a second. And uh, since this is a, a nerve service, I'm going to have to uh, manipulate it somehow. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead into my uh, tool, solids menu, go to the very, uh, toward the end here, where is it at? Uh, edit surface, oh, extract surface, and of course I can't uh, subtract, extract a surface because it's all <laughs> one surface, right? So back out of that, uh, it's easiest way is to go into uh, your curve menu, uh, get an ISO curve, and it already slapped it on there, and position it to where you kind of want it. I kind of want it down around here, and I'll go ahead and hit enter, and then I'm going to take this curve, go to my transform, and mirror it on the other side and make sure it went to the correct side. There we go, turn off Y. So there it's mirrored. And hit enter, so they're both on the same side, or, or opposite sides, right? So now I can take my uh, surface and uh, split it with uh, this curve here and this curve here and hit enter. Okay, so now I have two different surfaces, right? So I have a surface over here and a surface here, and we'll take these two surfaces right here and just join those together. So we got those and this, two surfaces. Now, if I go back to my texturing tools, go to texture, select my object, this object here, 
and we'll apply whatever we want. Let's go do something a little, uh, let's take the same thing and select it and close it. There's my surface just on the outside because you definitely don't want to uh, chew up the customer's finger. <laughs> or maybe you do, I don't know. Oh, I just uh, accepted that so we didn't manipulate it. But we can go back and uh, change it. Uh, so right away you can tell there's a lot of uh, overhang here, right? Okay, so this is uh, uh, right here. If you take it, it's a mesh, right? And then we have a, uh, a uh, well, a poly surface or a nerve surface there. So those aren't going to go, uh, you're not going to be able to just put a sprue on it and print it or anything. You're going to have to do uh, a mesh repair on it. But it, in order to do the mesh repair, it, it's, it doesn't really like this stuff here hanging out. Uh, if I was to do the mesh repair now, it would come out with maybe mixed results. Uh, yeah, we we could try it. Let's go ahead and try it. Why not? Uh, so, uh, for let's back out of that one there, and we'll go to our manufacturing. We'll go ahead and select the entire ring. We'll hit a mesh repair, and we'll give it a few seconds and see what it does. Okay looks like it came out. Let's click our mesh in here. Oh, I didn't join it. I didn't have to though. So let's pull this out. And we'll turn on... Yeah, it, okay, but it didn't... Of course it's just the outside. It didn't take our... Let's pull this one out see what this one looks like. Oh uh, well, not a very good, uh, well that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, so it really didn't work, right? Which I was kind of wondering if it would. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go back. Uh, we have the ring here. Uh, so what I should have really done is take that surface and this surface, okay. Let's go back to where I can see everything. All right, let's join that together. Push enter. Okay, uh, let's take our mesh and hide it for a second. Let's take this and this and join them together. So we have closed poly surface. Let's bring that mesh back out. And let's just try it one more time, just so that we know that uh, they were joined together. Shouldn't really have had to worry about that. So let's take it and let's go back, select it all, and click on mesh repair and give it a few seconds here. Okay, let's see how this did. And hit enter, and we'll take the item, and we'll drag it out and s turn it on plastic and again it didn't really mesh it together okay so let's go back all right so we have that uh, like I said it doesn't really like uh, that uh, gap where the mesh is at actually back to plastic would probably be best so we'll go here. So that that gap, right? Uh, we're gonna have to do something with those gaps to get it to uh, kind of flow on there correctly. You can see it's kind of overhanging. So there's several things you can do. Uh, you can just take your uh, mesh and uh, you can kind of move it in a little bit. Kind of see right there is a little too much. So let's go back out here and drag it a little out. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Mesh. Okay, is it still sticking out? Yeah, okay, well you can take your mesh. Computer's slow today. Alright, and kind of Go to your right view, maybe that'll help. And drag it just so that it kind of covers it up a little bit. Almost there. 
you can also take the, your uh, poly surface, which is probably a little easier to see, and drag it out just a smidgen. Let's take a look at that. Pretty close. You can also go in here, pick your poly surface, and then go to uh, tools, I think, no, transform, and go into uh, your, where's that, bend command, right? No, taper, sorry. Taper command. Click on it. All right. Uh, and then in select a side right here. All right, now if you look in your taper command over here, you actually uh, length, you can enable second length. So now I am able to do it widthwise uh, from the bottom. And I'm just going to take that and drag it in out just a little bit over my, so I can kind of see where it's going there. All right? So it's, uh, you ha have a little bit more control over it. And let's go ahead and hit enter with that and see what it looks like. Kind of. Yeah, you really can't look from there, huh? Plastic's the only one you get a good look from. All right, so you can kind of see it's uh, me, <laughs> but uh, you can kind of adjust with it, play with it. Poly surface, go back to uh, taper. Uh, this time, we'll select a different surface. We'll take this top surface, and we'll. Our enabled our second link so we have both links we can we don't want to mess with that one and we can kind of uh, manipulate a little bit all right so let's take that and let now let's try a mesh repair and see how it does so we'll so first we'll go to mesh repair and we'll select our item and hit enter And it's thinking. Okay. Uh, so now let's take it, uh, select it. We've got all kind of stuff out there. Let's get this mesh and we'll drag it out. Okay, that one is not it. So we'll get rid of that one. I don't know why it gave me so many. There you go. There's your mesh with your texture. So uh, when, when you're doing a texture and it's not coming out, you're going to have to uh, play around with it a little bit uh, to get the, that most of that. The, the more you get, the better it will be. Uh, those little overhangs. Uh, or you could just put the lines up higher, I guess, and have like a rail or something going along. But uh, yeah, you kind of have to mess with it a little bit. But that taper uh, tool is, is a really... Uh, use, useful idea uh, going to the transform going to your taper uh, selecting your uh, edge that you want and then activating that second uh, enable second length so now you have both directions you can manipulate so I uh, hope this helps uh, if it did please leave a like subscribe and uh, a comment below uh, and uh, share. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, good designing.